Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, most high and Christ bless. I'm Captain Gideon, and to my right, Officer Abner. Uh, you are watching 15 Minutes with the Captains. Um, today's topic is don't be defiled with women. Don't be defiled with women. That's today's topic. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, give me Sirach 25, uh, 24. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. So the scripture clearly says, of the woman came sin, and through her we all die. So don't get this class, don't mistake in this class thinking that this is women bashing. No, this is just going through the scriptures and say what the scripture says. As a man, we can't be defiled with women. So the scriptures say, of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all, we all die. So let's go back in the beginning to see what happened. Give me Genesis 3, verse 1, start at verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So pay attention to something. The scripture, say, uh, Satan came to, to the woman, and he said to her, are oh, you not supposed to eat from this tree? She said, no, we are not. Because if we do, we're going to die. So did she knew? Did she know the law? Yes? Mm -hmm. She knew the law, because otherwise she would say, oh, I don't know. But she said, we are not supposed, we are commanded not to eat from that fruit. The day we eat it, we're going to die. But let's, let's see what happened. And the serpent said unto the woman, "Ye shall not; ye shall surely not die. Uh, you shall not surely die." What did the serpent say? For ye shall not surely die. So the serpent told her, "Ah, oh, that's a lie. You ain't gonna die." Read on. For God doth know that in the day ye eat there thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So he told her, "God only told you that because he doesn't want you to become a god." So he's using her own emotion against her. There's a feeling inside of her that she wanted to be a god. That's why he already knew that. That's why he told her these things. Read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So because she wanted to be a god, she partook into what? into witchcraft that was the original sin we're going to show that further so she partook in it and gained wisdom and she took that to her lord and because he was weak for the woman he ate and what happened they both got cursed of god that's why the scriptures go, uh, go back to uh wisdom of Solomon. i mean surah 25 24 that's why the scriptures say through her we all die because she ate from the fruit and Gave it unto her husband, and then guess what? They both got cursed. Read on. Uh, read. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. So that's what the scripture says. So we went back in the beginning to show that it was the woman who transgressed. 
and then brought the sin unto her Lord, and her Lord was weak for her, and he fell as well. All right? Give me Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 27. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 27. For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. We did it again from the top because we just told you the, the sin that she partook in, she did not eat no apple. You're not going to find in the Bible where it says an apple. It says a fruit, a fruit that was that's supposed to be making men wise. There's no literal fruit you can eat and then it's going to make you wise. But wisdom of Solomon, precept, the, uh, the precept showed us what was the sin. Read it again from the beginning. Verse 27, for the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning. Stop. The worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning. Read the cause uh -huh. and the end of all evil. So evil started with worshiping of idols. That was the original sin that got us all jacked up. So through her, we all die, right? Give me Revelation 14 and 4. Because we can't, we can't, we're not supposed to bow down to our women. We're supposed to uh, love them. You understand? Know Take care of them, but don't have your women ruling over you. Read on. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with woman, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb, whithersoever he goeth. So when we're talking about the elect, the scripture clearly says these are they which are not defiled with women. Not defiled with women, for they are virgin. They follow the lamb whithersoever they go. Whithersoever he goes. So what does that mean? They are virgin. Give me 2 Corinthians 11 and 2. So, you cannot, in this truth, as a man, you cannot have your woman running you. You're supposed to be the ruler of your house. In the law. Read. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, mm -hmm. that I may present you as chaste virgin to Christ. So, you see that? That's what it's talking about. Um, we are, for they are virgin. We are chaste virgin unto Christ. And this is what it means, follow the lamb wherever he goes. Whatever the Bible says to do, that's what we're going to do. The Bible clearly tells you the order. God, Christ, men, women, children. So we cannot deviate from that. Because the moment you deviate from that, then you become the father. And some of you may not have a wife. But guess what? You have an aunt that you live with. You got a mother. You got a sister that... Do not let any woman rule you. You're supposed to rule your house according to the law. You follow? So let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 29. This is where Adam fell, and that was from the very beginning. You got to be very careful to see where Satan attacked first. Satan attacked the household first. So in this day and age, as we're coming back together as the 12 tribe of Israel, guess what? That's where Satan is going to attack, the house first. Because the women are the weaker vessels. So us men, we're supposed to study and be imbued with knowledge so we may know how to run our houses according to knowledge. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. So the scriptures tell you the time is short. The time is short. Christ is going to come. So it remained that they both that them that have wives and those that don't, they got to live as though they had none. What that means? Does that mean you just kick your woman to the curb? Give me the precept of Maccabees. So 2 Maccabees 15, 18. That is, that's not what it's going into. Let's let the precept talk because some of you might be like, you see, I could treat my woman any which way I want, just dog her. No, 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 no. We're not talking about dogging no woman. You need a woman to create a nation. So guess what? The scripture tells you, he that loveth his wife, loveth himself. So you're supposed to love your woman. So what that scripture means? Let's let, 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 let's, uh, let the precepts speak. 2 Maccabees chapter 15, verse 18. For the care that, that they took for their wives and their children, their brethren, and kinsfolks was in least account with them. But the greatest and principal fear was for the holy temple. So you see that? That's what it means. It says, for the care they took for their wives and their children, their brethren, and their kinsfolk, I'm going to stop right there. It shows you that they did take care of their wives, their brethren, their kids, and their kings, folks. So it's not talking about not to take care of them. No, you're still taking care. You're still going to work, making sure um, your, your, your kids eat, make sure they have a roof over, over their head. Because the scripture clearly tells you a man got to provide what? Shelter, 
food, clothing. You follow? So those things you still got to do. But the second part say, those things was in the least account with them. But the greater and principal fear was for the holy temple. So which means they placed the temple of God first. Their duties to God was first. So which means you have a wife. But yet we do what you call the quest. So you have to live up to the acts of the apostles and travel. Don't stay at home to please your woman. Meanwhile, you, had the t you could have taken the time off. You had the finance to be able to go and travel and do the work of the Lord. But you place that woman first. Then you are defiled. That means what? You place your woman above the work of God. That's what we're talking about. Okay? Because if that's the way you're living, most of I might just take that woman from you. Okay. So let's go, let's go in the scriptures to see what happened when uh with our four mothers when their Lord loved them too much or they are hindrance, you know, to prevent them from doing the work. Give me Ezekiel 24, 16. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 24, verse 16. Son of man, behold. Right, start at 15. Verse 15. Also the word of the Lord came unto me, saying... The word of who? The word of the Lord. So that's the Lord speaking. Let's see what the Lord says. Came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Yet neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. So the scripture says, the Lord told Ezekiel, I'm going to take away the desire of your eyes from you. That means there's something Ezekiel really, really, really loved. That was the desire of his eyes. He said, and when I take it away from you, I don't want you to cry. I don't want you to weep. None of that. Let's continue reading to see what was the Ezekiel, um, the desire of Ezekiel's eyes. Read on. Forbear to cry. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of thine head upon uh, thee. Make no mourning for the dead. So that's going into what? There's a, a person or could be an animal, but let's see what it is. Because to die, you, there's only two things that die, right? Men or, and, and animals. So Ezekiel had a desire, uh, but that desire, most I say, I'm going to kill it. And when I kill it, I don't want you to cry. I don't want you to moan. I don't want you to do none of that. Read on. Bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people in the morning. So in the morning, Ezekiel went to teach. He spoke to the people in the morning. Read. And at evening, my wife died. Who died at evening? And at evening, my wife died. At evening, Ezekiel's wife died. Because what? His wife was the desire of his eyes. He put her too much, too high on a pedestal. So she became a hindrance in his life. Most of us like, nah, I need you to do the work. Therefore, she got to go. And do not cry. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. And the people... And the people said unto me, Wilt thou not tell us what these things are to us that thou doest so? Then I answered them, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak unto the house of Israel, thus saith No, that, that's it on that. So let's go to uh, Luke 14. Luke 14, 26. This is very serious. No, we're not telling you not to love your wife, but do not idolize your wife. Do not place your wife above doing the work of the Lord. Don't do that. You're going to be defiled with women and you're not going to get the kingdom. Read on. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So what that means, the scripture tell you love your wife in one section. Now Luke is saying if you come to me and don't hate your wife. It's not talking about you literally, oh, get away from me, I hate you. No. It's going into do not love her above the Most High God. When you do those things, you are not worthy to, do, to be the disciples of the Most High God. So if you want to be a disciple, you don't place none of these people above God. Not your mom, not your uh, pop, not your brother, not your sister, not your wife, not your kids. You place the law first. You place God first. Then you are worthy to be a disciple. Because if you don't, then you're not worthy. Um, 2 Corinthians 11, verse uh, 2 and 4. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You see that? The Most High God is jealous over us with godly jealousy. Because why? We are espoused to one husband, which is Christ. Without that he may present us as a chaste virgin. So nothing is supposed to come between us and the love of God. 
Not a wife, not a father, not a, a mom, not a children, nothing. Because God is a jealous God. So whenever you place those things in between the relationship you have between you and, and the Most High God, guess what? Either somebody going to get killed or you just won't get the kingdom. We don't? But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So the same way Eve got beguiled by the serpent, Paul was warning like, hey, I'm afraid the same thing might happen. Because there's an ideology that women are supposed to run the house. Where that came from? Read on. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached. So you got the serpent preaching another Jesus that we didn't preach. Read. Or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So there's a, there's, a serpent, there's a serpent out there teaching a different gospel. And that gospel comes with a different Christ. And what does that Christ come with? An effeminate spirit. That's what you see in the churches. The women are behaving very manly. And the, and the men are in the background like, hey, 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 Jesus loves you, my brother. No, you are defiled with women. With that, we're going to say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.